Shay Wiggum, my brother. Welcome. Thank you. It's Thank so you. good to have you back, man. It's, uh, you know, you were here once before, but it was before I was doing, you know, the video and the audio. And you, Dean Winters, Tom Fontana, Leon Robinson, and Harry Lennox got me started. And, you, you know, you're truly one of my best friends and a brother. And you've you've been there for me during some of my darkest and, and, and best times. And, you know, man, I don't know where I'd be without you. And I appreciate in this business, it's you can get lost in the wind and just you know mm -hmm. not yeah. have any sights of what to do or where to go and you've been such a brother to me and it's such an honor because you're such an incredible actor man and yeah man i just got so much love for you hmm. uh thank well first of all thank you for that um uh and i think yeah i think it's what it's what what we do you know what i mean um it, it, this is if we're going to put it in context with being the actor, you, you, you need you need that. You need those people. Um, I needed it at one point. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And, yeah, man, and, and Gaslit is, I mean, G. Gordon Liddy, man, what a <laughs> character to play. You know, there's something I've always thought, which is tragedy is the overwhelming presence of comedy. Mm -hmm. And there's something so interesting about that character just because it's like, it's so tragic. It's it's funny at times, but it's so dark and twisted, and there's so many layers. And I think it would be really easy, and a lot of actors could fall into a trap of making it a character. But you just nail it out of the park. You make him so human, and I'm just so blown away by the work. And and I'm really proud of you. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah. I mean, I, again, uh, I, I I appreciate it. I it when I. Kind of just to take you through how how that happened, how it came to be. Um, I uh, I was doing something in Europe at the time, and I got a call from Matt Ross, who is our director, one of the best one writer of, actors directors in the game. In my opinion, he is right up there with the best that I've worked with. And uh, so he 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 calls and says, "Look, we have this I have this piece. It's on Watergate. I want you to play Liddy and and." Uh, I remember thinking to myself, two things right off the bat. Uh, number one, uh, they've done this in All the President's Men. I'm not interested in doing that. And he said the same thing. Yeah. They've done that. They did it so well. You don't try to recreate that. And two, uh, Liddy um, scared me. I can understand why. Yeah. Scary, it's, scary guy. Well, just not even so much that. It's the what it was going to take in order to try to put him together, you know. Um, and you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful uh, of not all the time, and, you know, not to be facetious on that. Like I, some, some of them scare you more than others. Liddy scared me more, you know, just because, you know, he, he, he. On the surface, it, he looks like he is just, he's, he is the ultimate uh, zealot. Yeah. But to get to where we were going to go in the eight episodes, I knew there was a lot of comedy to be mined, you know, Coen Brothers-esque. That yeah. was one of, that was up there on our wall, you know, all the time with Matt and I talking. And um, so, yeah, I, you know, so I said to Matt, I, I remember saying, from London, I'm like, uh, okay, but why, why me, man? <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, he just said, I want to, I want to go into battle with you in this, and I said, okay. And so I had, luckily, I had months to prepare him because it, it took every bit of that. Yeah. Before we dig fully in, just for the viewers that have listened to your first episode, you know, since the last time we spoke. You had just finished Joker. Obviously, Joker has come out now. And you were doing Perry Mason season one, which has obviously been out now. Yeah. And just circling back on that, you know, before we dig into Gaslight. Oh, yeah. I, I'm curious for you, man. You know, what was that? You know, Perry Mason, your, your work in that, that. That, I think, is my favorite pilot of all time. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Tim Van Patten, you. I mean, that New Year's Eve ball. I mean, it's just <laughs> like... I'm a, I'm a big noir guy, man, yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. just like, man, you're, the, yeah. and I, you know, I mean, I, I know it usually involves like 
you know, a, a female counterpart, but you and Matt have so much chemistry. I buy the friendship, you know, man. It's It was a thing of beauty. I, I love that season, and yeah. L- Lily Taylor did the show. She's a friend, man. What You know, how was that experience, you know, going back to – you know, because obviously people know you from Boardwalk. Yeah. Going back to period. Yeah. You know, was that was that a good time? It's it's for me. It's it's as good as it gets. Yeah. It's the perfect storm of a period piece, which I love to do. We're 33, 1933. Uh, it's to work with my best best friend in the world, um, Tim Van, Van Patten. Patten. He knows where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> for me, HBO legend. Me. And he's just good. I mean, he approaches on the directing end like I like I do on on the on the acting end. So that we had that going for us, and and we Howard Quarter ended up coming in, who was uh, one of the writers for Boardwalk Empire, who is oh, a, ma- a maestro. So we had all that going for us, and so we and 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 to try to tell uh, 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 to photograph Los Angeles like you hadn't seen it before, yeah. and Tim managed to do that. Um, so it was, and, and Matthew and I. I mean, I I'm a big believer. I uh, I don't think you can uh, create chemistry. No, you either have it and you let it come to you and it just happens and Matthew and I you get lucky every once in a you know Michael Shannon and I you have that it's like if you could bottle it up and sell it you would but you can't yeah I don't know what it is I don't and I don't even try to question it a lot Matthew and I are very lucky in that and I but I'll tell you one thing one of the keys is it comes down to generous uh they're both generous actors do you know what I mean um and we'll touch on this a little bit with even the biggest, even Tom Cruise, uh, who I'm, I'm, I'm doing something with right now, there's a generosity to them. In other words, they want you to be as good or not better than they are in the scene, as yeah. opposed to the old adage, I'm going to win this scene. I'm going to be dominant in the scene. I don't, I don't prescribe to that. Alpha like, actors kind of trying to steal, you know, each other's thunder, and I, is that no? I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really get down with that. I, I like to. It's a dance, and to figure out and to see how deep you can take it. You know what I mean? So Matthews, I mean Tim, obviously is is the Everest in what we do as a director. Yeah, he's the best man. I yeah. mean, for you, you know, like. I was talking to Morgan Spector the other day, who was mm. doing the Gilded Age, and he mm. did uh, the plot against America. You know, another period piece Boardwalk. for HBO. He did yeah, Boardwalk. Boardwalk. Yeah, yeah he was he's even, a great actor. Yeah, yeah, he's an awesome yeah. guy. Did also second time podcast. Um, mm. You know, do you feel like wait, wait, you've had someone before me do it twice? Yeah, Morgan Spector. Yeah. Hey, that's no fair. You didn't tell me. But that. you're you're one of my best friends, man. <laughs> Morgan's a good dude, but you know, I think okay. his best friend's Rebecca. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm curious, man. You know, like as I mean, the streaming wars didn't exist yet when Boardwalk Empire came out, and I put that up mm-hmm. there with with the wires. What one of the great just epics? You know, I mean, there's. Yeah. You know, I know there was a little bit of fictional elements, but there was so much truth in that. And, you know, uh, as an actor, certain people, you know, like, I, I know Daniel Craig's going through it with Bond. You know, they have a hard time getting away from that. And you did so many other incredible things like Waco and, and all, you know, what uh, Danny McBride show, Vice uh, Principals. Yeah, Vice Principals. You yeah. know, like... For you doing a period piece again, was that a, a concern, or if the writing's great? No, 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 no. I, I, my whole career, you know, Ryan. My whole career has not been. I don't. I don't approach it from a f- place of f- fear in terms of what I should be, what I shouldn't be doing. I follow the work. Yeah. You know what I mean. So I would never. I mean, if Tim Tim came to me and said, "Listen, let's." Uh, Let's get ready. We're going to go tell this story. I'm I'm in. I, I don't even need to read it, and I'm in. You know, when I get someone like Tim Van Patten or something, but I um, I never out of oh well I've done this, so I, I I don't think like that. Yeah, and I'm curious for you, you know, because I know you. I mean, we can talk about it because the trailer just came out for Mission right. Impossible. Right, right. You know, and I'm so excited for you. Thanks. Shortly after Perry, you got that call. How did that feel? Yeah, well, I mean, that's one of the great stories, man, for me. It's like you always hear about 
uh, I had done. I I don't want to talk too much about it. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't know. I I love talking about. I love talking about Macquarie and Peru's. Um, I had done Homecoming. You remember Homecoming? Yeah, of course. Julia Roberts, Sam Esmile, who I will segue into that with Gaslit. Both of them again. I had done Homecoming, and and that was a that was one of the great for me one of the great characters. I got a I got a chance to do something different, Um, and I get a I'm I'm. um, I'm at a, uh, I was lucky enough to get nominated for an award and I'm at an awards and I see Macquarie and um, I go up to him and I say. Pre-pandemic? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Cool, this cool. is going back. And he was up for an award for the, the, the mission before, mission six. So I'm there and I see him and he, we kind of lock eyes and I go over to him and I say, listen, I'm not too cool for school, man. I, I love your stuff. Going back all the way to the Usual Suspects, which he wrote, and then got won the won the Oscar for. So right out of the gate, and I said we and we struck up, and he said some nice things about me. And he says to me, I'll never forget. He says to me right there, I'm going to write something for you in the next mission. And I said, Oh, that, oh, that'd be that'd be amazing. I'm in. Didn't hear anything. Yeah. Whole calendar years ago. That was in January. A whole calendar years go, go, year goes by, and I'm, it's December of the same year, <clears throat> and I'm at the house, and I get this text that comes through. It's something out of Mission Impossible. It says, <laughs> it says is this still you? And I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, and I said, uh, it, it is. And he goes, I'm calling from a European number <clears throat> in 10 minutes. Pick up. And I'm like, so my heart's out to here, you know, and I'm nervous as shit. And I yelled to the wife, look, I, I, I think something cool. I don't know what this is. And he calls. He says, hey, this is, uh, this is Chris. This is McHugh. And I say, hey, McHugh, how you doing? He goes, how's things going for you? Good. He goes, they're about to get a lot better for you. And I said, what do you mean, man? He goes, yeah, hold on a second. I got Tom Cruise on the line. Wow. So it's Macquarie and Cruise. And it buckled me. I'm not going to lie, it buckled me. I had to kind of gather myself for a second of there. Of course, man. And I go, hey, hey guys, how you doing? They go. You hadn't known Tom at this no, point? Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, man. And they go, out of nowhere, uh, I remember Tom goes, how would you like to join the Mission family? And I go, and they go, not in one film, but two films, seven and eight. Wow. Pack your bags, we're going around the world. And I'm like, just blown away, emotional. I get emotional, even thinking about yeah. it. And so we started, man, we st- I started with the two of them. And so, yeah, so, and now the trailer is out. We made a big movie during a pandemic, and that's all Cruz and Macquarie. And you guys were the first, really, to kind of start back up, right? Yeah, we were the canary in the coal mine, man. Yeah. We, uh, we, we got to um, Venice, Italy. We were supposed to start, and if you remember... Uh, COVID. This is going back. If if we can go back in time here, you know, a little bit. But COVID was 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 brutal. It was hitting in northern Italy. No vaccines. Nobody nah. knew what it meant. No yeah. man. And yeah. it was just. It was. It was. It, so we had to get out of Venice. Um, <clears throat> got out, and we, and everybody had to figure out how do you make a film during during COVID. Yeah. And Tom, you know. I remember like four months, something like that. Four months later, Tom said, get ready. We're going back in. Uh, to, I, we think so we you started out and then had to pause. We didn't. We never even started. Uh-huh. We were there ready to start on like a Monday. And it was like everybody needs to, everybody needs to live. the airport's closed. Yeah, they, yeah, everything was closing. and Yeah. Wow, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm, you know, so proud of you. And the trailer looks awesome, man. But Thank you. But we are here to talk about gaslit and <laughs> you know it's very rare that a show like that casts a company of actors that i mean hamish linklater chris messina chris bauer yeah. julia roberts sean penn i mean it, it dan stevens i mean yeah what so when you got that call from matt because i met when you were in london you were doing mission right yeah. what was that like because you know there was this huge commitment was there you know were you sure if you could do it or not you know <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> well, yeah, well, you know, uh, well, I needed, actually, I needed permission, again, going back to Cruz and Macquarie, uh, they had to get me out of mission a little bit early, like a month early in order to be able to do it. So you talk about how 
you, I really owe people. I owe those two. Yeah. So yeah, so so yeah, I uh, I get the call and um, and I started. I started in Europe. Um, uh, started prepping it over there, man. And and when I when I got it. You know, um, first of all, always for G Gordon. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. always for Liddy, and um, you know, it was. You know, it's it's kind of it's it's a it's an honor to be to be asked to do someone like Liddy. You know what I mean? At that iconic, and I I was like, you know, so I felt the weight, but I can, I can use that uh, for me. Fear can be it can it can be paralyzing or to me it can be a real motivating factor if you if you know how to channel it you know what i mean yeah. you want to be scared you don't you want to be you want to feel those butterflies i guess like an athlete you hear about that you know usain bolt at the start of the hundred in the olympics you know what i mean you want to feel something yeah. and so i could i could i could feel that with liddy you know so yeah, I got the call and 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 I, and I I remember I wanted to work with Julia again, um, and I wanted to work with Sean again. I'd worked with both of them before, and so I uh, that was and 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 I really wanted to work with Matt Ross uh, uh, after Captain Fantastic. Yeah, that was the best film that I had seen that year. It was electric. It was alive, and I knew what he I knew the potential of what he could do with this. And then Chris Messina was going to do it, who's become one of my best closest oh, closest really? friends. Oh, really? I love Chris for. I love him. I yeah. love his work. Um, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, it was, you know, it's one of the, yeah. So yeah. Did, did you get all eight scripts? So you knew the arc of. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, I needed. That was not one of those you could piecemeal. You know, you couldn't piecemeal me. Oh, here's the first one. We're not going to talk about the second one. I needed the whole thing because, uh, I, I mean, talking to you, he was a beast. It was a beast to put together. Yeah. It was a it was an absolute beast, um, <laughs> because you it, he it, it, he it travels. You know what I mean. It travels from getting asked to be in the uh, one of the White House plumbers and figure this thing out to where we take him once he's in prison, which we'll touch on that I'm sure. But L Liddy wants Liddy wants two things in life. Yeah. Everything is a, comes from a deep, deep insecurity in him. From the, at age four, he talks about. So everything is a deep insecurity. So he wants two things, in his words, not mine. He wants to be seen by King Richard, by the president, yeah. as someone who is a genius. He wants... Richard, I said, you are the smartest individual that's ever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he I wants do. to be seen, in other words. And he also, more than anything, wants to test his will. Yeah. He wants the the test of a lifetime, which he he gets one and not the other. You know what I mean? He gets tested in our in our piece. Very much so. Yeah. And, and you know, for those who don't know, I mean, he was in the FBI for a while yep. before hopping on to. Uh, I think he did like security for a bit and then got on the Nixon. You know, and then that was when Gemstone happened, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, even taking it back a little bit further, man, uh, you know, for your audience, he he went to Fordham. Uh, Mitchell went there. And, you know, he always felt like he wasn't an Ivy Leaguer. He always felt like an outsider. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And then he'd be studied, he'd practice law. But he, you know, in in my opinion, he's, and, and, and it's one thing to say also about before we even delve into him, I said to Matt, "If we're if we're gonna if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna take this on. I want to give him a fair shot. I want to give him a fair, you know. And how are we gonna do that?" I said, "I don't want to bring any baggage, anything that I've heard or known. And 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 I, I'm really not gonna I'm not gonna look at anything '90s into the 2000s. That's not what it concerns like me. Like archival footage or his well, know, I didn't acting. Wanna, I mean, Did you I watch his acting work? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you watch a little bit of that. Yeah. I watched him on Letterman. I watched him on Conan. I watched, you know, him with Rickles. And that's all funny. It's great. It's funny. But Great, that, great Timothy Leary interview. Well, yeah. the Leary stuff I was interested in. Yeah, it's amazing. The Leary stuff, the early Leary. 
Um, but I'm interested in 72, the break-in, you know, the psychiatry break-in, when he, the first job he did, the White House plumbers, into becoming, you know, in, ahead of Gemstone. Yeah. That's what I'm concerning myself with. What you see, you see the, 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 the germ, the, the, the start of him, uh, uh, this, he really was a, um, We'll just say he's a performer at heart. Yeah, you know what totally. I mean. Totally. Yeah. yeah. He says he says in Will, I you know I could have been an opera singer at Juilliard had I wanted to. I could have been that. I could have been that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and so he's he's a character which, when you take on Liddy, you have to be careful because it can it can easily go into caricature very quickly. Yeah. So you have to really take it from a real elementary elemental place of I know nothing I don't I'm going to start from scratch from a real broad perspective and chisel my way in to when we finally commence and we start on that first day the first day was episode 3 in the um the uh supply room saying, oh with the bullet yeah the, oh I love that scene so, dude you know but that's a that's a that's a motherfucker of a scene to put together. And it's just so <laughs> twisted because you you know he's being sincere, but you feel for him. And and how do you play that? Because this character who's who's that passionate and that powerful, I think a lot of actors would fall into that trap of, of overdoing it. But you don't yeah. at all. You know, like how did you find that balance of of yeah. intensity but sincerity? Because he he he, he really wants to. Yeah. He means it. You know. Well, that's well, that's the whole key. Yeah. You got to play the truth. Yeah. And in that truth, why you can go places, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he just is, he's, is it, and that's a tough scene because it, we, when, when we, we went in there, we, we, Matt and I, uh, 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 and Dan, we, we knew it had to travel. We didn't want it to be stagnant. I come in, stand by the door, tell him, blah, 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 blah. We wanted it to travel. And then we had, the uh, uh, she the janitor she came in and we had some you know stuff which is again it's Cohen Brothers esque but it's it's it, it you know you see elements of Fargo or Miller's even Miller's Crossing in there you know like I love that scene because I know how hard it's that my scene favorite is to scene put it, too yeah. yeah besides the cell scene that cell scene's <laughs> great yeah yeah, well, yeah yeah we'll get to that we'll get to that yeah, yeah I uh, I I love that scene because. That's, we get to see, you know, God, man, when I'm thinking back, I'm almost having a panic attack thinking about putting it Sorry, together. Sorry, dude, no. No, it's yeah. good. It's yeah. just, uh, uh, you know, you're looking for the truth, whether it is uh, uh, the truth of this is my plan. It's a 14-point plan of gemstone. We're going to kidnap people. We're going to photograph people. We're going to videotape. And he means that. And then he gets laughed out of the room by John, by Sean Penn. Yeah. And then you see the petulant child in him. He doesn't, he's that cat walking around saying, nobody sees the genius. I'm the genius. And talk with his son. Yeah. Well, and then you get to see, yeah. that was that was important to me. There was a, there was a period where they took that scene out. No. Or they had cut it. They'd cut the scene down, you know, bare bones. And I said, I need something. I need something in this scene. Because he loves his family. And, I mean, he loves Fran, uh, Franny and those five kids. And so you're looking for those those places to ground him because yeah. you know what's coming. You know the wildness coming. So I said, I need something here. It's, I, I think we've taken the teeth out of this scene with my kid. And I said to the writers, go back in, man. Let's find something Matt and I did. And they found this beautiful Irish, you know, uh, saying, I don't know, lyric, you know, yeah. where they're French, the good ships and and. You know, it's the friendship. And he was like, Dad, look toward that. And then that, you know, I just thought it was a beautiful moment. It's such a beautiful moment. And I think, I, I don't think it humanizes him in a way that you really yeah. need. And it was imperative. And I, I'm curious, you know, as you have a piece and there's scenes like that in the, in the supply closet, you know, what is it like with this huge company of actors do you guys rehearse together, or is it you you show you do it on your own, and you show up with the work and you play with it as you as you start to do takes? Hmm. Yeah, you never you never get a chance to to rehearse together. It's film. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, the, the luxury of the Lumet days, you know, or uh, you know, uh, 
I don't know. Yeah, the Lumet would take two weeks with Dog Day. You know, I don't think you, you don't get that really anymore. We, but I mean, I go over everything as you know with a, with Tom Draper. Yeah. So but Tom Draper, who did the podcast, is I mean, I think the best acting coach in the world, man. Yeah. I mean, he's a soothsayer, and he taps yeah. into things that you know aren't immediately clear but when you do it you're like oh my god that's it yeah. that's the truth you know yeah. and and your relationship with him and you guys have been friends for a long time you you work with him on just about everything right not just about i worked with him on every piece that i've ever done from tigerland i mean all the way through every script of boardwalk empire true detective the joker whatever whatever it may be i work with tom and we 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 cold read into putting it on its feet, and we have various ways, you know, not to not to not, but to let you in. I don't really talk about process too much, as you know. Yeah, because, this podcast isn't process. No, no, no. I don't. I, 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 don't, I like magic. I don't want to know yeah, the secret. Yeah. That's you know? why. Yeah. There's not enough mystery. I feel like, you know, left. There aren't. There are no secrets left anymore. So, but I will say with Liddy, this was the most in depth that. And just to let you in a little bit on it, we had, I had a, uh, on this one, I had a, 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 a board, um, cork board, where we had every scene that I'm in, um, you know, we had it all up there numbered, and because you shoot out of sequence. So if we had, this was the board, I would have, you know, the first scene we did was episode three, scene 25, storage closet. and. <clears throat> then I would have, he would, and we had another guy, Tom Lenoci, come in, and so the three of us, we would put it on its feet, and you know, really, it it it, it took all of that, you know. So it's not just a singular process. Yeah, and and if it's okay, man, I'm I'm curious, you know, because this is something that I've I've auditioned recently for Real People, and where do you draw the line between impersonation and and bringing the fundamental truths to the character with your own you know spin on it because if if you want to see a docudrama it'd be on the history channel you know yeah well <clears throat> you you have to make every character your own you have to um, bring self to every character you know that's 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 101 and so you would say for instance let's take Liddy I had to bring parts of myself to him. So you, I, I'm looking at what can I hang my hat on very early on, and I mentioned it, family. Two things that really helped me were I could really get down with a guy who loved his family um, and loved his, you know, he, 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 that, he loved that. He may have been insane as a father, I don't know, but I, and then also that he never named names. So we had that, Tom and I had that, above everything else get back to the family and the kids whenever you know and in in the insanity yeah. and um he never named names everybody else everybody else narked everybody yeah. else the minute McCord, they got yeah McCord, they're <laughs> yeah. all running like rats on a ship totally and that's what liddy said you're, you're a bunch of fucking rats on a ship you know yeah. and he said i'm gonna do 24 23 to 24 years i'm gonna do it and i will do it no matter what it takes. And so I said, I, 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 can, I, I can get down with a guy like that. You know, I can start there. And, and that's coursing through everything that he does. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and I'm so curious, man, you know, like, did you get, because I know he passed away March 2021. Did, yeah. did you get to talk to him at all before? I tried. Ah. I tried. Yeah. Uh, I tried every avenue I could to get to him. I don't think that... He and the family, they're not, they don't. Stoked on yeah, that. Yeah, they don't want that. And I get it. Yeah. I get it. But uh, I really just wanted to meet him. For this. I think he, by the time I got to him, I had heard through uh, someone had gotten to John Dean. And we were doing a bunch of history uh, uh, lessons with professors prior to starting Gaslit yeah. of the time. And they were saying that he had, he had a bit of, you know, he, he had, you know, his memory and stuff. But I just wanted this. I just wanted to be in a room with him. I would have sat there, just Felt sat with energy. him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would have loved that, but I wasn't able to. 
Yeah, a few, a few years ago, uh, my teacher, Alec Baldwin, interviewed John Dean, and he invited me. And I got to go, and I so badly wish I had this show before, because, like, I'm not going to lie, man. There was so much they were talking about, John Mitchell, and I was like, who the fuck is that? You know, like, I don't know what this is. But it was so interesting to get to hear him and talking about his, his moral compass and when he decided, you yeah. know, he, to flip and, and how that affected him and, and the relationship. Yeah. And, you know, I'm curious... For you, as you guys shot this, how hard is it working out of order to kind of keep track of where Liddy's at in, in certain scenes? Because that I, I can't even imagine how difficult that is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's not, look, I'm not, you know, it, it, it's, it's very doable, but you have to know, um, I do have to know what you're coming out of and what you're heading into and where, you're, and where you're headed. Do you know what I mean? So that tonally, it's uh, and and also you say that like I had um, I had two scenes cut out of the pilot um, that really introduced me to John Dean, and I had a and and I think they were necessary to be cut at the end of the day. You know, yeah. you hear the you writers say you got to kill your babies. You know what I mean? In other words, some of the most painful stuff you do is take the scenes that you love the I most know. out. And as an actor, you know, you see these and you think, oh, this scene is amazing. I'm, I remember I was doing, um, uh, uh, I was uh, painting uh, uh, men from a revolutionary uh, uh, war and reenactment that I was doing. So it really gave you a lot of insight into Gordon in his basement. And then John Dean calls me and says, how would you like to lead the White House? Plum uh, how would you like to lead this Project Gemstone? And I, we have this tete-a-tete. -tete. It's gone. And I, you know what? I, it, it was crushing when I first heard that, but at the end of the day, I'm like, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's fine. So, yeah, so, so in other words, you don't meet me until I show up with the big... <laughs> PowerPoint that you got to hang it on? Yeah. yeah. You know, and again, that's yeah. Matt. That's Matt Ross. Yeah. Because I'm sitting in the office, and he's like, what do you think you're... What are you doing? And I said, look, I said, one thing that... Liddy loves his women. He loves women. Yeah. He said, if, if the one thing that's going to get me in trouble in an interview I saw, he said it would be women. And he said, so with the secretary, I have a little, just a little something with her. And, you know, we got her involved. And then Dean comes rushing out. And it's, you know, and then we're off to the races. <coughs> but, you know, um, so you, you, sorry, I digress. I cut, circle back. You, you, some things you get cut. So you never know how that's going to work. So you got to really be on top of it. That's amazing, and, and I'm, I'm curious, you made such an amazing point earlier about Perry Mason and, you know, not too alpha-stepping in the ring, to be there, to be present, and to work. What was it like working, you I mean, you worked with Hamish and, and Bauer and everyone, you know, and yeah. stepping in these scenes with these amazing actors, you know, is it, do you guys start to play with the levels? Like, what's that like, you know? Does it change as you guys do more takes? And Yeah, you, you know, Hamish, uh, man, that scene, uh, when I, <laughs> I ask him about, you've never tasted your own blood before. I know, it's so good. And I, <laughs> I uh, it wasn't scripted. Um, and oh, I, wow. I, well, that, that, that was, oh, okay. that was, but then I say, you know, Matt and I, and he really, Hamish let me really go there. It wasn't, you know, where I jack him up on, uh, against the cabinet there. And I remember, you know, I said to Hamish, I said, you know, I may, I don't know what's going to happen here. And he was really all about just whatever happens there, because Liddy, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. That's what you have to, he's this feral animal you know um um he's a you know uh he's a he's a wild dog and you got to feel that in a scene obviously he has to trust me in knowing but i remember and out of nowhere uh matt i'm in a scene and it was like david o russell how he works i'm there and i've got him jacked up and i said you never tasted your own blood have you and matt matt calls out to me he's right by me and matt calls out and he says uh you have now, haven't you? Yeah, now you have. And it was just this ad lib, yeah. like you know. And those are the ma those are the moments you're looking for, the magic, you know, that you're looking for. And I'm I'm curious, man, because you've been such an incredible actor for so long and done so much good work. When you're doing something that that scares you, mm -hmm. and you know, as you're doing it, do you? 
do you watch playback? Do you watch your work or do you, you know, like? No, I, I don't watch it. Um, uh, except if it's, um, something's not working. No, or? not even, no, 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 not that. I know that, not that it's, uh, if it, if it's like, uh, uh, you know, a scene, um, an action scene or something like that where you can see the kind of the ballet of it, but it's not its not just a, you know, a two-hander like, you know. I, I don't look at, I don't go back and watch replay. Um, but it's its its not to say that it doesn't, you know, I, I worked with Jeff Bridges and he goes back to the monitor and he is, I mean, for me, he's as good as it gets. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not saying, but for me, I'm. I try. I'm in it. I, I try to stay in it, not break out of it. Once I'm there on the day and in a scene, I want. I want Liddy always kind of in there, and then you know. Yeah, it makes sense, man. I, yeah. I'm curious. I had my friend uh, Gabriel Kane Day Lewis on the podcast, whose dad is Daniel Day Lewis, and you know I learned a lot about yeah. how he does mm. for you because stamina wise and you know operating at that energy level. You know what was what was it like leaving set and then coming back, you know, do you, I mean, we yeah. live in an interesting time now with people's thoughts on being method or whatever, but right. like, yeah, I, you know, uh, well, this is, this brings up, I, mean, uh, I, I, I don't, um, I don't like to talk about how hard I work or how much I stay in it or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't like totally. to talk. It's 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 not about that. I you know when I I don't I don't like when I hear actors tell you how hard they work. I never trust it. Or sending dead rats. You know what I mean? Like I will say this. Um, this one this one took a lot out of me, and I I leaned on a lot of people in order to bring Liddy to life, especially when we get toward the end in episode seven you know uh i needed i needed s several people there like uh, how hard we went to make being in prison testing of the will a, a, a real visceral you know experience yeah so i needed a lot without talking about it like i said i i i don't I, you know yeah, it, it, but it, it was it, a lot went into it. Let's just put it that way. I love that, man. And I'm curious, you know, because with that episode seven and that scene, it's kind of almost, I don't want to go all Shakespearean, but it's like <laughs> there's almost three acts to it because he <laughs> yeah. starts kind of positive and he sends that classic yours in victory and in love mm -hmm. to, to his family. And yeah. then it starts getting a little bit, you know, he's helping people, but it seems like he's dealing with classic <laughs> right. prison behavior. And then, right. but he utilizes it to be able to get himself segregated, right? To to solitary. Yeah. And then yeah. that's when shit gets wild. Yeah, that's, that is, I mean, I remember, I remember when we, when we started that, Matt said, uh, and Robbie Pickering, by the way, was the writer of, of this uh, Robbie and Amelia, and they did a, just an amazing job. And we shot that. That is nothing changed in that. That is in this. All everything you see is in the script. And we said, Matt said, I want this to be a film within the film. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's. Um, and so we had our own little. You know, I think it took ten days to shoot. All I was going to ask, was that a long time? Yeah. Yeah. I think wow. it was something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it. It felt like ten years. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, um, but yeah, and and here's something else. I don't know if you know. We we worked with live rats in the piece. You did. Yeah, it was a, it was unbelievable. Um, like I said, we wanted it to be as real as possible for what what when he's testing of his will, and so we brought. Uh, a, a, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but he we brought a guy with live rats who had trained these rats, so 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 that I could hold certain ones of them. I could one would uh, was trained to 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 scamper off. And again, this may be given a little bit too much behind the scenes. Other than I think it's pretty cool to know that we worked with live rats. Yeah, no, it changes everything, yeah, man. Yeah, and um, one, I mean, it was it was talk about magical. You're in there, we're in there, and I'm working with one. And he is reacting to me in that. So it's the whole that whole set piece is. I mean, I'm, 
I'd be lying if I said I wasn't pretty proud of that. It's piece. incredible, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what I. I and mean, that's I, all Matt. I, I don't take any credit on that. I, that's Matt uh, and Larkin, our DP, um, putting that together. Yeah, it's. I mean, the, the solitude, what it does to a man or any any human in in existence. I mean, you know, we kind of got a taste of that in COVID. So it's it's interesting watching him in that environment and ultimately he did only four and a half years mm -hmm. correct yeah uh, the irony is that jimmy carter pardoned him yeah wow. you know, no one else i didn't it, know that yeah part. yeah carter pardoned uh um yeah i toward the end i mean again um, um you take license you take some liberties and 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 the, the interesting thing one of the uh, there's so many fascinating things about liddy but Matt and I kept saying, to, there's, there's truth and there's Liddy's truth. Do you know what I mean? So when, when Liddy talks about, um, I was you know, afraid of lightning as a young boy, so what did, what did he do? He, he tied himself, according to him, to the tallest tree that he could find in the worst lightning storm with a belt. And he survived it. So in his own mind, he said, I no longer am afraid of lightning anymore. With rats, he was afraid of rats as a boy, and so he captured a rat down by the wharf, down by the, you know, there, and he, he ate it. He put it over the spit and yeah. ate it, and that comes from, you know, Native American, you know, lore that he had read, and and so, um, you know, there's always that truth, but once in 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 prison, in solitary, it's it's the ad of be careful what you wish for because he thought. You know, he could do 24 years, and it broke him. It, it broke him. Yeah. And so, you know, he did. He did. I mean, I ended up doing, I ended up doing four and a half years. And, um, yeah, so. That's so interesting, man. And I'm curious, you know, because, like, sometimes I feel like, you know, I, I, get, I get to watch a lot of shows because of this. You know, you can shoot one thing, and the edit can come together so differently, and mm. for better or for worse. And, when you finished and you rapped on this, did you know what you get, what you had, and you know, did you feel really good about? Because it's just, I mean, Gordon, I mean, dude, I, I just want to know more. You know, that's <laughs> it's like you know. It's, you, I felt, you know, I felt the second part of that. Yes, I felt really good about about the from. Let's see, for me, it's it's it's. I never call it a job. I think I've talked to you a little bit about yeah. this, just in private. It's never a job. It, 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 at its best, it's experiential. You have an experience. You go through something as a collective with your costumers, with your, your, your set designers and Dan and what he did and Larkin and the, the, the camera unit, you know, and you, 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 you go through something. For me, that was achieved. It was a, there was an experience that happened, yeah. you know. You hope people see it. You hope people respond to it. I think it's beautiful. I it think, is beautiful. You know, but you never know what, what's going. You can't do something in hopes that um, I, I can't. I'm not doing Mission Impossible in hopes that it becomes the biggest film in the world and will get me more. I don't do it like that. It never works that way, I even if you know. do do it that nah, way. Maybe for some, maybe for some. But I, for me, man, <clears throat> I've always said it's about Working with directors, the Van Pattens, I mean, look, look, not to get off topic, but look what, like, when Mr. Scorsese hired me for Boardwalk along with Van Patten and Winter. Working with Scorsese allowed me to go to work with Oliver Stone during that period Savages, of time. Savages. Yeah. Savages. It allowed me to meet Damien Chazelle and go to work first man. It allowed me to meet Kerry Fukunaga. You know what I mean? So working with the best directors for me led me to the best material, which I led me to the best, you know, characters. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how I've always done it. It's never, you know, I'm not on... And, and again, I'm I'm not saying I know you need to be on. I'm not an idiot. I'm, I'm but I'm a little bit of a dinosaur. I don't do any of the social media and stuff. It's really through work and work that gets work for me. You know, the David O. Russell I worked. Through, I met David after Boardwalk. So Scorsese hiring me and O. Russell saw Boardwalk and I did Silver Linings Playbook and an American Hustle. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that for me is it. It's gratifying for me. 
I cannot tell you how many people have reached out to me, not knowing that we're friends, being like, you got to get Shea Wiggum. He's the best <laughs> actor in the world. And, and yeah, you really are, of... man, because like nobody works like you, yeah, you know, because yeah. you 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 care so much and it shows yeah. and there's such commitment to every character whether they have 5 minutes of screen time yeah. or 20 minutes yeah. you know and yeah. and I'm, I I with Liddy I saw some interesting parallels to the true detective preacher did you feel that at all uh no no I mean no no I'm no I haven't, you haven't asked me that before no I no no I didn't see any no I didn't think that um you know just no, men of faith, I, no, I thought. No, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. No, I, I No, Therio <laughs> Preacher Therio was uh you know oh, I man. love that scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um no, but I mean, look, uh just to make this personal, to keep it somewhat personal, like you recently did uh, a law and order and we talked and even there You'd said, well, it's the beginning. It's there's, you know, it's not. And I go, no, you have to do the work, figure it out. Who are you? What do you yeah. want? And then know all, you know, where are what? What have you come upon? And you know, this scene. How do you deliver that information? And then you let it all go. You know what I mean? You can't. One of the things that I I I don't like is to see an actor working, to see the gears turning. Yeah. You know what I mean? To see them playing their process, to see them to sh showing me, you know. So I'm, you know, as I told you, I'm big on you got to strip all that away. And once they once you get closer to the scene starting, you know, you're 10 minutes, 15 minutes out, whatever, I always get them to tell me. And then I'm in it, I'm in it, but the relaxation comes. And then once they call action, you're just you're in the scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're in it. You're not thinking about, oh, what did I what was I working on? You know, you're letting things happen so that things can bubble to the surface that if all of a sudden I'm in this with you and I knock this Starbucks cup over, I'm not like, well, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I gotta pick that shit. We up. respond in real yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So sorry if I went off topic. No, but not that's at all, man. Just I, to give a little insight as to I'm I'm curious and I really don't want to get too political about it, but you yeah, know, no water, politics. Wa yeah. Watergate has been such an interesting thing because it's constantly depicted and, you know, there's been so many different angles, the Nixon angle, the Agnew angle, you know, and I'm, I'm curious, do you think, you know, that this time that we live in now is as turbulent as that time? Oh, because I start to wonder as yeah. I watch these, like, is this gonna, is this era that we've lived in since 2016 going to be the the Watergate movies in 20 years? I know it's not a question you yeah, have an answer to. I don't know. I'll tell you this, man. And I'm not trying to not answer your question. I'm not trying to be cagey in any sense. Yeah, I just a, a great story is a great story. I'm in search of great stories and great characters. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And man, that could be the Godfather, or that could be the Goonies. Yeah. You know what I, I'm saying? Totally. Like I'm both I, great movies. Just, I, yeah, I, yeah. I I mean that. People were asking me recently as I've been talking a little bit about Liddy, like, what are your favorite movies? What are the what are the most what indelible impressions were made on you by movies? And it, I can always say Godfather one and two. You know what I mean? I can always say Dog Day. I can do that. But I also said, threw that out there, the Goonies the other day, and someone went, well, you? Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding? And now I revisit it with my children, and I go, it, it takes you somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's kind of. I feel the same about Back to the Future. But, oh, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah man. I, I'm curious, man, because, like, you've worked so hard, man. You know, I've, I've known you for almost five years now, and. Before that, starting, you know, in things like Tigerland and Risk Cutters, mm -hmm. now being where you are, you yeah. know, like, do you ever just take a moment to be like, fuck, I'm, I'm working with Julia Roberts and, and Sean Penn and... Oh, yeah, he, it's not, yeah, it's it's not lost on me, man. Yeah. It is, it's, I'm like a, I'm like a depression era baby. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> if you grew up in 29... And you never had anything, and then you start to get something. It, you you never take it for granted. I never. It took me so long, of 
you know, right outside of these walls here of doing downtown theater, putting up a theater company, of trying to get into theater companies that I couldn't, trying to, I never got a chance to do a Law and Order. I never did a Law and Order as an actor. I think I'm the only. I can make a phone ever. call for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and so so it took me so long. The climb was so hard and steep that yeah, I mean, when I'm sitting there with Sean and talking, you know, he's he's in there with. John Mitchell and I'm, or Julia, who's meant, I mean, meant the world to me. She yeah. gave me two of the best characters I've, and never, uh, she, never, never forget how much she, she means. She's a producer. She's not just an actress. She's so, one of the best in the world, man. Of, she, she I, look, I told, I did the panel. I said, she's doing Aaron Brockovichian work right now. Yeah. She's doing stuff that that she harkens back to her. And that doesn't mean, in Homecoming, she's brilliant. But this is uh, this is on another level of Martha. And she went there, her and Sean. I was there on the day that you're about to see that's coming in seven. They had to go there. They had to go to a place that is scary. And they both, you know, she went there with Sean. And so she means, so, she means a lot to me. It's, but to answer your question... It's not lost on me. I I I, I texted uh, Tim Van Patten and I talk all the time, and I said he's he's overdoing Ben Franklin. He start he's going to do this piece on Franklin, and I said, you know, as, as weird as it sounds, I, something had happened really good good for me, and I said, man, we're lucky, man. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah, you know what I mean. We've been very fortunate, and that's never lost on me. Yeah, you know what I mean. You can't let that happen. You can't get jaded. You can't go through the motions. I can't. You know. Yeah. What I mean? so. No, I appreciate the honesty, man. You're incredible, and you deserve it all. And you know, kind of winding down to the final questions yeah. here. Yeah. I'm curious for you, in this hypersaturated content time, where Facebook, Yahoo, Google, everyone's got content. You know, mm. for you, you know, I know you got to do the next mission, but like, what makes you say yes now? What makes me? So, oh man! Because like, um, I, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't mind me sharing, like, Cop Car, that was a yeah. a first time filmmaker, right? Oh and, yeah, he, I, yeah. I mean, again, it's 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 you can uh, sometimes you know uh, you get me with that was John Watts. <clears throat> I'd always wanted to work with Kevin Bacon. Yeah, and Kevin and I said, let's go do this this. I think we did that thing for less, like nine hundred grand, and we went to Colorado Springs. Wow! And I mean, all in nine hundred, and it, it's amazing. You know, you you go and you and, and John put that thing together, and so yeah, and and then to see like John and I had dinner two weeks ago, and we're sitting there. He got Spider Man off of that. Yeah. And what he did with Spider Man, he he reinvigorated it. It's 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 you know. So yeah, I mean, again, I, I told you I caught Chazelle, I caught, I, I did Cop Card, you know. I mean, I caught a lot of these young, you know. The, I I was so again, not to overuse the word fortunate, I'll just throw that out there. But I caught Werner Herzog and Terry Malick and Stone and Scorsese, but I also caught Watts and Chazelle and Fukunaga and Nichols and you know Danny uh, McBride yeah. and David Gordon Green, you know these young. The, the next ones, they're hungry, man. They're hungry, you know? I love that. And that hunger is so important for no matter what level you're at and to always keep it, which I know you do. And, you know, I, I know I asked you this in the last time, but I asked every guest this question is the final question. Hmm. And it's a crazy time. We're coming out of the pandemic. In-person auditions are, are maybe done forever, you know? And it's really tough now to kind of build a career, you know, without being able to build connections because everything's on Zoom. What advice, you know, would you have for the next aspiring artists of, you know, not just actors, directors, writers, you know, because it's it's such a hard time. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, yeah. it, 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 it's easy to get lost. Uh, you know, I'll... I'll, I'll I'll keep it personal, like uh, what I would tell you or I tell anyone. Um, I'm a, I'm a romantic. I never want to lose that. So when yeah. people use the word "it's gone forever," when people say, 
uh, the movies will they're gone forever the experience of going into a theater I don't accept it yeah. I won't accept it I, I think this this business has a, is, has a an amazing litmus test if it's too hard it's okay you should do something else if you have to continue you know to fight to fight to get in this business is it harder yes but there's also more content than ever than ever yeah you know what i mean um so i i just i think it offers an amazing life and the life of an artist you know it, that is forever that is something that you you know you should aspire and want to do you know yeah Shay Wiggum, thank you for being here in person for my 200th episode. You know, man, like I wanted a friend and a brother and, and you know, for the audience listening, you know, you have been so good to me, you know, like you met me when I didn't have rep, you know, and you always gave me notes and you always took the time to just be like, you kept me sane and yeah, I would you. not be here. I mean, I, I might I might not even be alive without you, man. You, you're well, such that's a, that's whoa, that's too. No, big man, you're you're you're, you're, you're a really good guy, I and, and it. it's rare in a business for mm. people to have this kind of success and to be so grounded and humbled. Mm. And it's just so beautiful to watch justice prevail and great things happen to a fucking great guy and an even better actor. And I'm so proud thank of you, man. And I love you to the moon and back. And and thank you for being here. It's, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. Man. Congratulations well, on 200. Ah, thank you, man. Okay. Much All love, right. brother. Okay.